This is a Saks sale purchase. This is a Farm Rio sweater. I love it so much. It's like just this much Pennywise the Clown, right within my Pennywise the Clown comfort zone. So yeah, I'm, I'm kind of loving it. Dun, 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 dun. Anyway. What's up guys, welcome back. We have a sunshiny day clear skies, the birds are chirping. So I opened the window for some extra ambiance today. So far we just have someone doing a solo. Today is my mid-year best of the best. I really tried to think of everything. I went back through my videos and everything to just like make sure that I didn't forget anything, but I was also extremely discerning about this because there have just been like categories of makeup this year that there kind of always is this, right? Where every company seems to have had the same idea about what formula they needed to put out at that certain time of year. For this part of the year, it was cream bronzers and skin tints. Everybody put one out. So I had to be like savage <laughs> basically in picking my favorites. If you're ever interested in products that are tippy top, best of the best, but aren't necessarily within some kind of temporal context of like, oh, okay, well, I've only reviewed them within this certain amount of months. That's what my top shelf videos are for. And I do those every like hmm, six weeks, two months or so, whenever I have like a noticeable change in the collection of things that I just like cannot put down. And a lot of times those will transcend all like time barrier. It's just like what I like. So this specifically, like these might not have come out this time period, but I tried them this time period. So all that said, let's go ahead and jump in. <laughs> all right, guys. So before we jump in, I do want to thank today's sponsor. I am proud to be partnering with Beauty Pie for this portion of the video to help them announce new additions to their Wonder Gloss Collagen Lip Oil. These are their summer shades and I love them. I've been wearing them in so many videos lately. So we have Sun Hazed and Naked Peach. I'm gonna apply these for you here. Naked Peach is this absolutely beautiful, slightly shimmery kind of light sheer peach. Imported from Italy, it is a supercharged lip oil that gives a sheer kiss of color with a shiny, balmy, hydrating finish. So if you are familiar with the liquid lip balm formula that is that nice plushy slippy never gives you any kind of weird buildup on your lips nourishing kind of formula that is what these are and they are one of my absolute favorites on the market because they really hit all the marks in terms of the performance and the shades and this lovely vanilla smell to them and they look incredible and they can be had at the beauty pie price so each of these is twelve dollars for us shoppers right now for members on beauty pie i have paid a lot more for a lot less when it comes to these kinds of liquid lip balm, lip oil kind of products. A lot of them out there on the market are over $30. I have paid $60. <laughs> more than before. So $12 is a phenomenal deal for these and they perform as well or better than many of the ones that are in my collection already. The other shade here is called Sun Haze and it is more of kind of a cool mauvey bronzy color. They're infused with collagen AC micro vectors, antioxidant cherry and hibiscus oils and they have a hint of shimmer. The previous ones that I have don't have the shimmer in them. I really feel like the shimmer adds just a little touch of something really healthy and summery. I love how it gives this really glassy, dewy look to the lips, but it's not at all sticky. If you are unfamiliar with Beauty Pie, it is the first ever membership-based shopping club for beauty and luxury products. The annual Beauty Pie membership is a total game changer if you are a beauty lover. It is very much just a one-stop shop for all all things, skincare, makeup, body care, hair care, fragrance, what have you, all without the sometimes up to 10X retail markup. And if you're already a member or you are considering becoming a member of Beauty Pair, which I would highly recommend, you might have noticed that there are certain things that make an appearance in almost every single video for me from Beauty Pie. Two of them are right here. I get asked about these all the time. This is the Beauty Pie Seamless Foundation Buffing Brush, and this is the Pro Angled Concealer Brush from Beauty Pie. These are so well-priced, so luxurious, and they honestly make 
the makeup that I put on with them look like it's maybe even like better performing than it is. A lot of times I will say that I'm like, wow, that blended like a dream. But then again, it might also be this concealer brush. I always say I need like 20 of this foundation brush because I use it for more than foundation. I use it for contour, for bronzer, for blush, pretty much anything that's like a cream application. I also use the Archology Eyebrow Sculpting Gel in almost every single video. Like when you see me applying a clear brow gel, it's almost always this one because it just adds definition back into my eyebrows after I fill them in and everything. And it's just a really, really lovely kind of like universally applicable clear brow gel. And I really can't speak highly enough of the formulas of their James Malloy collab that they had recently. These are some of the most unbelievably luxurious <laughs> eyeshadow formulas. They are like, oh, velveteen goodness. They really, really perform like something that I have paid big, big top dollar for. I really think that Beauty Pie is just one of those best kept secrets. You cannot any place else get the quality and the performance of their products, of their makeup products, of their skincare products, at the price that they're able to offer it at, you just can't get that anywhere else. So that is why I continue to work with them. That is why I continue to love their products. I feel like you can feel the inspiration, you can feel the passion for beauty and like a love of beautiful things in each and every one of their products. So you can use my code Khaki Sent Me to get $10 off at Beauty Pie and you can check the link below to check out everything that they have to offer. I highly recommend that you do. And thank you to Beauty Pie for partnering with me for this portion of the video. Now we can jump into the rest of my favorite things from the last six months. I'm skipping sunscreen because that's technically, to me, skincare, but I will tell you that the ones that I have been loving, extra super dewy category has been the Josie Marin Get Even Sun Milk SPF 33. It is a mineral sunscreen and it is so lovely. And that is when my skin is dry, dry, dry on just about any day. Doesn't really matter <laughs> what my skin's doing. My go-to SPF formula is the Tula Mineral Magic. It is just the most gorgeous, slightly golden tinted, blurring, uh, probiotic SPF 30. And I wear it so much. I just like burn through it. I love it so much. And then the third one in the like primer, mattification, balancing, maybe oilier skin category, it's chemical, but the new Thrive sunscreen, the Sunproof, is excellent. It's very, very, very good. If you're into a chemical sunscreen, I kind of can go either way, but it is just amazing for extending the wear time on your makeup, for really like balancing the oil and the dryness and everything of your complexion. And it's also a sunscreen, so that's good too. All right, let's begin the actual complexion products with something that will surprise exactly no one. The Laura Mercier Tented Moisturizer Light Revealer Natural Skin Illuminator Broad Spectrum SPF 25 Sunscreen. This is a chemical sunscreen, but you will not see me wearing anything that has octinoxate in it. But fortunately, a lot of brands are taking octinoxate out as they're iterating on their sunscreen formulas, which is great. So. The active ingredients are avobenzone, homosalate, octosalate, and octocrylene. Those are just fun words to say. Granted, I have this in OW1 Pearl, which is quite light, but it's so sheer, it kind of doesn't really matter that much. And it has the most beautiful finish. It's not shimmery but it refracts light on like this mi micro scale, right? I mean, it has this blurring quality to it that's not mattifying. It just seems to kind of obscure light on the skin. It's awesome. It's awesome. It's really, really cool stuff and it's pretty darn low coverage. I really have enjoyed wearing that. It is something that like when I'm halfway through my day and I look at my skin or even all the way through my day and I look at my skin in the mirror, I'm like, what did I put on this morning? Oh yeah, it was that because it's just miraculous stuff. I should also mention I am 35 with dry skin. I do have Botox usually, but like it's wearing off so I can, I can do all of these things just in my forehead. But yeah, just for the sake of reference, if you're new, 
here. Like that's what I'm up against. And I'm also kind of neutral, leaning a little bit, tiny, tiny, tiny bit yellow. So the next thing is this, this actually came in PR, but I love it so much. It was an instant love. This is the Rare Beauty Positive Light Tinted Moisturizer, Broad Spectrum SPF 20 Sunscreen. This has both a chemical and a mineral sunscreen in it. So it is a homosalate titanium dioxide and zinc oxide sunscreen that is also in a just lovely <laughs> skin tint formula. I have the shade 14W and it's kind of dewy, but more it just has the appearance of a radiant finish without leaving your skin tacky feeling. And it's got like a hair more coverage than that Laura Mercier. Oh, it's so pretty. <laughs> it's so it's so pretty, but it also has that like slightly, like I said, radiant light reflect, right reflecting, light reflecting quality, maybe light refracting quality that makes your skin just look better than real life. And it builds. It's got a really, really stable formula on the skin. And so while this, I feel like you can sheer it out quite a bit or you can wear it at like a typical skin tint kind of coverage level, this you can get more coverage out of because it will actually like stabilize and build on itself a little bit, which is a really, really nice thing to have. It's fantastic. And a skin tint for folks who maybe are not quite as dry skinned as I am, that is like really balancing, has some skincare ingredients in it, and is also just <laughs> so darned luxury. That's what I'm wearing today. It's the number one de Chanel Fond de Tente, or the Red Camellia Revitalizing Foundation. This is in the shade B10, and the finish on it is not quite so radiant. It is a little bit more towards a foundation, but it, has a little bit more coverage and it's slightly, slightly, slightly more satin. So like Ingrid has combination skin, maybe leaning a little bit oily and she loves this. It tolerates powder. I wanna say it's silicone free. I'm not totally sure. It's not fragrance free, but I love, I have like really grown to love the Chanel fragrance. It really actually adds to the experience for me. I enjoy it a lot, which is kind of funny, but you can see as it's drying down, it's taking on a true skin finish. It really, really just looks like skin. And it gives me a much more perfected finish and coverage level than those other two do. These are more of really nice stable skin tints that you know dry down and give me the ability to kind of like mix different textures on my skin powder and cream and get something really really natural looking this is going to not only be a good option for people who might have slightly oilier skin than i do but also it's going to tolerate powder better and give you the ability to achieve something more snatched if you so desire. It doesn't have to be worn that way, but it can be. It can be worn very much like a true foundation product. So I really, really enjoy this for its versatility. Okay, concealers that I have tried this year so far, I think. I mean, pardon me if I am wrong here, but this is the one, y'all. The Item Beauty Air Hug Concealer. I cannot stop using this. It is such a beautiful high performing formula and it's $18. The one thing that I have heard complaints about is that the shade range is like kind of wildly skippy. Like it just doesn't have enough shades. They are spread pretty widely, but like there's just not enough nuance shade to shade and they need it because this is high coverage. It's so nice to have a creamy high coverage concealer in my collection because I like to wear so many skin tints. And so it's like something that, I mean, it's not as high coverage as the Rose Ink. That one is like the most, one of the most highly concentrated things I've ever used. But this has creamy shape tape vibes or uh, hydrating camo concealer, but like even more creamy, more coverage. If you have a shade in this, like go into the store and check it out. I really, really recommend it, especially for the price, but like it is so good. It's just so good. I like it so much. It's like hydrating, high coverage, creamy, beautiful, 
doesn't give me crepiness and even though it dries down well on its own if I look and I've kind of like not blended it well enough or something I can still go back in with the same brush after I've done other makeup and adjust it a little bit and it doesn't like pick itself back up or act all weird or separate or anything it's great it's just a really, really reliable formula. That's the only concealer that I'm talking about today. <laughs> okay, next we're going to talk about bronzers, right? Bronzers and, and maybe contours? I don't think there are any contours in here. So bronzer number one. This is the Rare Beauty Power Boost Bronzer Stick. Uh, sorry, Power Boost is the name of the shade. It's called the Warm Wishes bronzer stick and my son he had a hold of the lid and smashed it right in there but it doesn't really matter to them. who cares you can always tell when something is very loved in my collection because it looks like it i'm wearing this today it's so great it's so barely even like creamy wet it's almost just like a powder in a stick formula it spreads so evenly and i've said this i said this when i first tried this when she first Selena Gomez put out those like little blushes and everything that were very very silicone-y. I will always quote my friend Amanda Z who said this feels like a silicone primer but just pigmented and tried to like make it into a blush and it's so true it was incredibly slippy and was not meant to be something that carried pigment because it just picked itself back up it didn't have any real commitment on the skin and I feel like by the time she got around to this she had dialed it in. She made it, she made it perfect. And this is such an ideal, gorgeous formula. Again, for so many different skin types, because you can wear it, like you apply it like a cream and it blends really easily, but it's not oily or greasy or heavy or anything like that. It really just behaves like a slightly hydrating, super, super, super finely milled powder. And it's really, really agreeable. Every time I use it, I kind of just want to keep putting it on. <laughs> You know, it's one of those where you're just like, man, that just looks great. Maybe something's good, more is better. Like, that's how I feel about this. And as far as like these, you know, the, the category that this lives in, Rare Beauty is a, a couple bucks cheaper than some of its competitors. Another bronzer that I actually kind of argued with myself about as far as like whether it was worth the price because this feels kind of like an inexpensive package. Look, I'm just gonna let you win this one, okay? You can just, you can just win. This is my postpartum regrowth and it never can decide whether it wants to live in front of my ears or behind my ears but today it's going to be in front of my ears that's just how it's going to be so anyway yeah i had trouble i quibbled because this is 30 dollars. this is the milk makeup bionic bronzer and i'm gonna go ahead and wipe the whole category out here because there's no point in me talking about it three different times all three of these live equally wonderfully in my heart and in my mind. This is the Bionic Bronzer, the Bionic Blush, which is microscopic, and the Bionic Glow. Granted, these actually are a lot of product for the money. They just are in kind of immature packaging, which puts me off because I'm just so like, I'm just such a snob. I'm honestly, I'm a snob. But the formula impresses me so much that it, it transcends my my snobby natural proclivities, right? And the main thing here is the finish on these. And I think that actually the Bionic Glow shows it the best because it's something that, you know, it's very, very low pigment. And you look at this and you're like, yep, that's a shimmer goo. And I am so predisposed to dislike shimmer goos. I think that they are one of those things that are very beautifully photographed in natural light, but they rarely serve like a super great purpose in real life, you know? So that is the chip on my shoulder about things that are typically like this, you know, liquid shimmer things. But what's so awesome about this is it has like, you know, a really, really lovely, I think pretty like age agnostic, kind of reflective level. It's not glittery. It's not going to accentuate a bunch of texture. It's not shifting wildly. It looks pretty natural. It kind of leans towards like a blush tone and there are two shades in this highlighter, but it dries down like that. They all do. They dry down with this beautiful glycerin-y finish that hydrates your skin and it looks wet all the time, but it actually like dries down to it's not tacky.
snacky, but it has kind of this like grippy feeling to it, but it's by no means still like super, super movable. It's impressive. It's a really impressive formula. It impressed me and it makes my skin look gloriously smooth and glowing whenever I use it. So I think that the best way to go about this, if you do, I mean, it's not crazy, crazy expensive, but I also think that again, it sells itself short on packaging. But if you are excited about these, go on the Milk website, there is a package deal where you get a, a serious amount of bucks off. I think it's like 15 bucks off or something. If you buy all three of these and you can choose your shades and then you can also do their like 10 or 15% off when you enroll in their email list and it will also save you some bucks on your order. I think that you can combine the two. Don't quote me on that, but I think you probably can. So yeah, I really think that these are gorgeous and I'll go ahead and swatch the bronzer here for you. This is in the shade Time Travel. And the highlighter is in Virtual. The deeper one is called Reality. And this was one of those things that I actually bought the bronzer and then they sent me a PR package that included the other ones. And this bronzer is such a pretty color. It's a really nice color. It has just enough opacity to it and it also has that beautiful finish. And then this is the blush that I picked out. It's called Infinity and it's just a straightforward, really, really pretty kind of like rosy pink. Looks super, super natural on me. This is just a very, very quick face of makeup, honestly. If you're kind of into skin tints and that kind of thing, like this is what I wish that the Laura Mercier blushes were like these what were they called the tinted moisturizer blushes something that was so effortless something that just goes with the rest of their collection so effortlessly so intuitively that's what these are you put them on and you're like this was i <laughs> I, I blinked and i was done <laughs> you know they just go on really quickly but they're a pleasure two more bronzers I know there's a lot happening here, but there's been a lot of bronzers that came out. So the first is the Laguna Bronzing Cream from NARS. Even though it's coconut scented and I don't like it, I still have to admit that this is one of the best of the formulas that has come out lately and in so many shades. They released two of just Laguna. They released like a Laguna 1 and a Laguna 2, and this is Laguna 1. Look at the, like the coverage, the opacity. That's what I need. I need that blur, and I need it to not be like dewy translucent. I, I really, really need that kind of like opacity and almost a little bit of like a gray tone in there to look believable as a tan on my skin. This is something I'm learning after trying so gosh darn many of them. So I really think they nailed it with this formula. And again, it comes in quite a few shades, which is really, really lovely. It's also quite a lot of product. You get 0.67 ounces of bronzer here. And if you can tolerate the coconut smell because it's real specific but it's such an unbelievably beautiful formula and i would say that it kind of once it blends out it sort of behaves a lot like that rare beauty it's a different shade for sure like the rare is a lot warmer so there's the rare beauty and then there's laguna laguna is almost like a yellow contour by comparison but I feel like they both flatter my skin really, really beautifully. They're just kind of different looks and the formulas actually are very similar. And finally, you guys watched me fall in love with this. Okay, this is the Butter Up Play Bento, the bronzer specifically from this Kaja Trio right here. This didn't come, this isn't new at all, but it's new to me. And I just, ooh, it's got that same kind of like gorgeous, opacity to it and it's right in between those two for warmth. This is what someone told me, Samantha March, one of the loveliest Aries queens on the internet. She tried this, fell in love with it, and it started her cream era, <laughs> basically her cream makeup era. Like she was very powder oriented before that and then she was like, okay, I'm convinced we're going into cream products now. And so yeah, it is that, it is a gateway drug. It's so good. And like, look at that, it's right in between those two shades. It really looks so freaking at home on my skin. And bronzer is so personal. It's as personal as another complexion product in a lot of cases. Granted, you can wear different bronzers and achieve different things. You can kind of up or down 
the saturation or the temperature or whatever on your skin with a bronzer far more than you can with a foundation. A foundation, we're looking for a match, you know? but it is pretty stinking personal. And so bear in mind that I am neutral, leaning just the tiny, tiniest bit yellow and that I'm, you know, untan, well, I'm, I've been in the sun. So I have a, a touch of, a touch of a tan. This is tan for me, but uh, I don't have a fake tan or anything like that, which would make me look extremely golden. So I don't have that going on. Okay. I'm going to briefly make mention of something that bridges the categories by definition, and that is the bronzers. They are exactly the same as when they released them the first time from Bare Minerals, and they re-released them. They sent them all to me, and I'm still freaking in love with them. I have kind of fallen out of love with the really, really saturated ones, the copper and the rose. I do like them, but Kiss of Pink has really been the one that I lean on the most lately, and I like it because even for a pink, it's still, since it's a bronzer, it's still pretty light peach on me. I mean, everything turns pink on me, but compared to some of the Pat McGrath blushes that I tend to use, like this is a really, really great pop to add that's like a lot warmer and healthier looking and not quite so demure, but it still has that really beautiful blurring quality and just like a touch of mineral uh, light refraction. I wouldn't call it shimmer, but it's just a little bit radiant. Yeah, so I still love them and they re-release them so they get another mention. <laughs> and the other blushes that made it in, guys. Who boy, mm, these are, honestly, the RMS blushes, I need more of them because I love the formula so much, but these shades are quite winter for me right now. So I, while, you know, even though Maiden's Blush is still like this really pretty kind of sunburned thing on me, I am still leaning on things that go a little bit pinker and a little bit like, you know, powder pink, lighter than that. So I, I might end up just buying some more of them in the lighter shades that they made, like in some of the other shades, because now that I know I like the formula so much, I really, really like want to lean on them more. So, yeah, I have Maiden's Blush and Hanky Panky, and they are just so beautiful start to finish. You hold this compact in your hand. It's nice and heavy. It's a replaceable pan. So this kind of, you know, you push the bottom here and it'll pop out and you can just replace the pan. And when you get it, it is pressed so beautifully. And, you know, obviously I've worked on this one, so it's a little bit kind of dulled, but still it's such a beautiful thing to interact with. And then you apply it. And when you apply it, it's so gosh darn gorgeous. And the colors are so gosh darn nuanced. And this one, the uh, Maiden's Blush is going to pull kind of like that sunburn color. And then Hanky Panky has almost a blue, I have a little bit of Hanky Panky on today. And you can see it kind of has a blue shift to it, which objectively, like abstractly would freak me out. But in practice, it's awesome. It's so awesome because you don't really, know what you're seeing. It just gives like this slightly surreal finish to the skin. It's very, very excellent. I like them so much that I am considering buying all of the rest of them. <laughs> and they're not cheap, but they are quite a lot of product and you can just replace the pans. So yeah, there's seven grams or 0.25 ounces. That's a lot of powder blush. <laughs> and cream blush wise, I think I only have, besides the Milk Makeup Bionic blush, I think that I'm focusing just on one today because you guys know I've been using a lot of the same ones for a long time and they're kind of hard to blow my mind. And honestly, this isn't even a new formula. It's just a new shade. And they re-released this shade and they doctored it a little bit, I think. So this is Mimi from Westman Atelier. They also updated the packaging. And so the lid is gold and big fan, big fan. But man, what a nuanced, gorgeous thing that is. It's so pretty. And honestly, I really feel like Westman Atelier gets it on color. And I've loved that since they have been at Sephora and open to a new audience, they are mainly prioritizing expanding their shade ranges. Not to say that this one is for deeper skin tones, it's not, but they have been kind of pretty steadily releasing new colors in their formulas that cater to their new larger audience. And that is very, very cool to me. 
I'm not really sure what the story is behind Mimi, but it is just, I mean, honestly, I kind of want to put some on right now because I feel like my cheeks could use a little bit of like a light pink moment. This is almost a nude blush on me. And if you're unfamiliar with the Baby Cheeks blush formula, it's very agreeable on a lot of different textures, I would say. Like, it's not super, super creamy. It's not like straight to powder kind of finish, but it's pretty dry. And it's pretty long wearing. And it's unfragranced. And honestly, you get quite, I know it's very expensive, but you get quite a lot of product for your money. So I wish that they would do replaceable cartridges, but I, I bet you Gucci's working on it. So you get 0.21 ounces or six grams of product here. And Mimi is just, it's just a fantastic kind of like nude, leaning towards like old gum kind of color. I think that that really helped. <laughs> okay, what's next? I guess we're gonna talk about eyeshadow, right? Because the only highlighter that I really am like excited about is the one from Milk Makeup. I have no idea why the highlighter comes in the largest bottle <laughs> out of all of them. But I mean, I guess because you would use it maybe on your whole face, I don't know. But either way, big fan of the Bionic Glow. Talking about eyeshadows, I do want to talk about Byredo. I'm not sure when this specific one came out, but like, this is such a luxury experience. I don't necessarily know whether I would call this like an all-in-one palette because they're all kind of shimmery. It's more of a palette of gorgeous, like one and done focal points. So I don't think that like the ones that I bought specifically, like I have corporate colors. I think that one lends itself a little bit better to being kind of an all-in-one palette, but this one I reach for for certain shades and it doesn't have anything matte in it. So like I need that, you know? And so it tends to kind of go with, I'll show you, but other matte palettes in my collection, but the formulas themselves are just worth writing home about to everybody that you know, because they have this just, oh, almost incomparable, velvety, like romantic texture to them. I mean, they're just like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> There's something about them that's just really gorgeous and indulgent and luxurious feeling. Either way, this is the disco one and I love the packaging. It's just this really beautiful kind of organic shape the whole, the whole thing is just a very positive experience if you're into a luxury makeup item. Interacting with it is quite lovely. So yeah, and I'm wearing just, you know, uh, three of these shades on my eyes today too. <laughs> I'm wearing, how did I, did I do a okay contouring? I don't know, do I have a line? Either way, I'm wearing the deepest shade as well as these two light shades right here on top of this. <laughs> on my eyes as well as some of the next thing that I'm going to mention. Great segue, Khaki. Thanks, Khaki. And that is Monochromance. Man, woo, yeah. You can see how this one's been kind of loved. This is the Hindash, the second of his eyeshadow palette releases. I loved Butopsy, but Monochromance is just it's just great. I, I enjoy this so much because I don't have to really think about mixing any of the shades. I just like can use them straight from the palette onto my skin. They are some of the most finely milled, smoothest, most like blendable, gorgeous, no fallout kind of shades. And they are nuanced as heck. That's the one big difference between this and Butopsy. Butopsy was meant to be almost like primary in terms of you know, giving you the basics to kind of mix your own. This is so nuanced that it's more for kind of the lazy person who just wants to use things straight from the pan and not think that hard. And for me, like, yes, these colors at the bottom are very exciting and like, I love being challenged by them, but not only is this like supposed to be like a full face palette, so like these can be beautiful enhancers for blushes, but truth be told, it's those top ones that just sell it for me. I go into those all the time because they're just funky and weird and nothing blurs like this. Nothing blurs like this on the eyes. 
it is so great for nailing the details and getting perfected looking skin. You use like this very fair shade right here, kind of where, you know, you, you tweeze your eyebrows and your tweezers can't get every single eyebrow hair and we're humans and those hairs grow back and it is what it is, but you, you put that on there and it's like all of the shimmers and all the blending and all the contour and everything that you did on your eyes, like it just kind of goes and puts like a beauty filter on top of it. It's great and that's why I continue to reach for it. So it's such a reliably smooth, elegant formula that doesn't fall out. And that to me makes it worth kind of the like longer amount of time that it takes to use them because they're relatively low pigment because it is like a full face palette. So it does take a minute to build, but to me that's worth it because I'm A, mainly using kind of the lighter shades and it's more of like a finishing touch thing, but B, nothing blurs like the Hindash palettes. And if you've been watching my channel at all lately, like if you're, this isn't your first video that you're watching of mine, then this will be absolutely no surprise to you, but I have fallen in love with the Beauty Bentos from Kaja. Every one of them has knocked my socks off. So I started off with Orange Blossom. Amanda and I had like the same whim, the same dream, you know, on our own independent time. And we both ended up kind of picking this, these up and just like basically trying to influence the other one, being like, no, you need to buy this. And just like, I already did, wait, what? So yeah, this one really, really impressed me. The, the shades are really gorgeous and unique, but also the formulas are just, they're unbelievable. They're so, 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 so pretty, especially for the money, but regardless, you know what I mean? I'd pay double. So I love the, like the nuance of these shades and the choices that were made, like this brown, you could just wear, it's like the, one of the most like sophisticated browns, but then you get into like these right here and they're like two different versions, like orgasm and orgasm X to me, where it's just like, it, that's going to be the star of the show. It enters the room before you. It's so gorgeous and glitzy. What I love about this one and the rose water one are that they have the, the kind of the power to be the inspiration for an entire look, like each shade does. So it's like, you're kind of getting more bang for your buck in that sense, where it's like you could use each one of these as like a one and done, or, you know, combine them with some mattes in your collection and each one of these inspires your whole look. But then, then they released, because I think it's very smart of them to chase down the fact that people are probably into these a lot lately. They decided to release some new colorways and they released one called Mauve Bouquet. This one is an all-in-one eye look. It's not kind of three one and done, it could be, but this was my first time trying one of their matte shadows and also this wild, weird, hunky chunky, intoxicating celestial that they have. And you can see here, this almost feels like a sequel to Rosewater because Rosewater is not super pink. It is actually kind of in those mauvey tones that I wear really well because my skin tries to turn everything pink. It cancels out the purple. And so it actually does a really good job of kind of um, being flattering on my skin, right? Because like you can see these kind of try and turn pink, but it's like still got a little bit of like that mucky brown to it. And this leans all the way into that beautiful, I think kind of mucky brown, that mucky mauve that happens on my skin when I wear these colors. And so that matte is a flawless matte formula. The way that it blends on the skin is flawless. It's very, very purely pigmented, but it's not a particularly vivid color. And it just blends and blends and blends. It's so beautiful. And then these other two shades just kind of increase in excitement because you could use just this, you know, just this medium one on the lid. And it's got a little bit of like a blue shift to it, a little bit of glitter there. And then there's just this one that's essentially like a disco ball. Like, yes, you can just completely blend it and you just get a really nice shimmer, but you can also build the heck out of it and get, I mean, look at it in the pan. It's kind of wild. It looks like somebody just like, you know, discovered it in ancient Egypt or something. It's just got this really wild flakiness to it. Now that does mean that it will fall out if you're not super careful, but like when you apply the warmth of your skin to it and spread it, it becomes this kind of like shimmery, consistent foil. They're really remarkable. And kind of like a Charlotte Tilbury quad or a Pat McGrath palette, I really believe that there is 
one of these for everybody's taste. You know, like I really feel like you can, if you only wanna get one, you're going to be able to find the one that really satisfies your needs. And they managed to really curate something lovely in just a pack of, of three little eyeshadows and they're $21. They're $7 in eyeshadow. So I think that they are a phenomenal deal all the way across the board. And especially bearing in mind kind of the reservations that I initially had about Kaja as a brand because I felt like their packaging was kind of gimmicky and bulky. These are so streamlined. They're so efficient, but also really just like pleasing, right? It's just the, the little uh, gradient of colors. I think that this is, this is a flawless, flawlessly executed little product. And one more eye product that I had to kind of reach back in my in my account to see because it was like the second day of the year. It was like January 2nd. I was able to finally talk about this, but I got it back in August, so it doesn't feel like it was this year, but it is the time to talk about it. This is my favorite Aether palette. Like she's been putting out a bunch of really good ones. I have the Citrine palette sitting right here because I like it so much. The little, the little quad, it's so great. It's so useful, but this one is so exciting and also so practical. So this is the Desert Sunset palette. Man, look at those shades, guys. We've got like these just really pretty, nuanced, cool, warm, neutral, desert kind of colors here. This beautiful highlight shade that actually works really well as a true highlight on me. And the golds are breathtaking. This is one of those palettes that like when you look at the palette itself, you're kind of like, you see that coral and you're like, oh, it's a wild palette, but it's not. It has one kind of like really cool sunset sort of thing to play with, but I mean, these are some of the most flattering, practical, kind of like goldy brown colors. And her formulas are just, they're just dialed in. They're so pretty. They're so pretty. Her mattes are incredibly smooth and blendable and very, very beautifully like pigmented. Look at that. And if you're unaware of, you know, all that Aether brings to the table, it's all zero waste. You can, you know, clean these pans out, recycle them. There's no mirror. There are no magnets. It just, just does this, you know, it's quite lovely. And I just think that this color story is the most practical one for me that she has done. It is so much fun to wear. I spent maybe a month kind of like helping her debut it because I did have the advantage of having like my head around it for so long before it released. But I have created so many looks out of this and never like gotten bored. There's so much to do. Especially if you love color, but not every day. <laughs> I love color, but not every day, you know? I don't want to color my sweater. Sometimes I want to color my face. Finally, I think, I think finally in the eye category. <laughs> so much stuff. Halsey, you done did it, okay? She made these little matte eye paints and she put them in a formula that is so easy to use. It is so rewarding to use because it's just, you know, you're like, when I want a bright color on my eye, I do not want to work that hard for it, okay? I want to do the thing and I want it to appear like a surreal paint on my skin. That's what these do. And they're in a delivery system that makes sense. I tried the Depixum pigments, fine. Fine. I'm not against the Depixum pigments. I don't have really much of an opinion on them. They're just not really for me. This is more how I think about applying these kinds of things is reaching for a specific color, putting it on my face and like getting into a flow state where I am like in a painter mode. And that's what these let me do. They did send me the whole new collection. So there was an original collection where the shades were a little bit more muted and this is more of like a box of paints properly that you would think of. You know, it's like a pink, a blue, a yellow, an orange, a red, you know, and it's so fun. They're so fun and they're so rewarding. One of the things that I get frustrated with when I'm painting is when I'm working with a dark background and I want to make something pop on top of it with a light color. 
it's actually a lot harder to find media that can reliably do that than I would have ever thought. I've actually reached out to one of my favorite artists and I was like, how are you getting these wildly bright whites on top of a dark background? And she actually sent me a link to the specific like oil sticks that she was using to achieve it. And they're like $25 a piece and I don't care. I bought them because it's that important sometimes to achieve the look that you're going for. And these give you the ability to work on top of anything and get a pop of color with so little work. It doesn't mean that things like this don't exist, but they don't exist in this delivery system. They're usually something like a NYX eyeliner, you know, and they're still not gonna be in every single color. Like this has so many different colors. I never find myself reaching for a color that I'm thinking of and not finding it there. And also with the white, if, if like you just want something that's going to give you the ability to make something pop and you're not really like, you know, in need of an entire collection of Technicolor paints, just getting the white, it just adds something totally different and graphic to your repertoire. It's awesome. These are really, really cool and so easy to use. Even if you just make blobs, I think they look cool. And they blend. You can still blend them. You can make a really, really nice like blended finish. They're very matte. So, you know, bear that in mind that's the appearance that it's going to give is go going to be something quite matte. That's the whole point. But uh, if you are looking for that look, but like, you know, feathered at the edges, like really, really blurred, it will do that. So I think that what's left are lips. The first thing that I want to talk about is this delightful formula right here. This is the lip oil from Typology. You get half an ounce and they're like $24 or something. And this is the shade Plum Purple. I have powder pink living in my purse right now because it's one of those things that like enhances any look. I just throw it on all the time, but like they're just, they're just like the perfect little addition to any look. They're so pretty. They don't have a fragrance or anything. This is a skincare first kind of company. They have like five makeup products. They started out with their skin tint, which is lovely. And they've kind of iterated from there. These are really, really beautiful and just a pleasure to use. They're in glass that looks like almost like a nail polish bottle, right? And it's just the whole thing is very elegantly executed and it could have been $60, but it's not. It's like 20, 22, $23 and I want all of them, so. And all the colors are so pretty. And did this come out this year? I think this shade came out this year. I think so. I cannot stop using this lip gloss. This specific shade of this specific formula, it's been in like every possible superlatives video since I got it. And it is the Victoria Beckham Posh Loss in Bikini. Now, they have one called Poolside that would probably do something very, very similar. I've seen pictures of it on black models and it does mm, pretty much the same gorgeous, cool toned nude kind of thing for deeper skin. And I do have that one as well, but I lean on this one because it gives me that kind of like blanked out creamy nude thing for my skin tone. Uh, there's no scent. There's no taste. It's just this perfect wash of color. It's so sexy. I got kind of excited about the clear one when they put it out. I was like, okay, it's a lip gloss. Like it's cool that it's in glass and I love her packaging and everything, but like the colors came out and I was like, yes, like goosebumps. She nailed the shades and she nailed the amount of pigment in the formulas too. They're just sexy lip glosses. Oh boy, guys, I think that that's it. I think that that's it for like things that I've tried this year so far that have absolutely knocked my socks off. Nope, we don't get the feet for free, not on the internet. <laughs> oh, I learned so much from you Gen Z folks. Thank you for watching my channel. I hope y'all enjoyed this. If I forgot anything, I am so sorry. I poured over my collection like five or six different times, making sure that I like was making the right decisions, but I am at the end of the day in Aries. And being thorough is not something I come by naturally. So feel free to ask in the comments if you're like, what about so and 
it's so I thought you loved that. I'll probably be like, I did, I forgot, I'm sorry. But anyway, guys, I hope that this was helpful slash enjoyable to you. If you enjoyed it at all in the least, please do me a favor and hit the like button. I would really appreciate that. And if you liked it a lot and you wanna keep hanging out with me, oh my gosh, please hit the subscribe button. You know where it is. I'm pretty sure it is red. And don't forget to check out Beauty Pie using the link in my description and use the code Khaki sent me for $10 off of your first order from Beauty Pie. Thank you guys so much for watching and for hanging out with me today. I love you guys so much and I'll see you in the next one, which is gonna be an interesting video. It's gonna be a little different, so. <laughs> okay, bye.